Welcome to class, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Wednesday. I think it might be for you. Mr. Eicher here. Here to talk about solving rational equations and inequalities. So we have two questions here. We have a fraction equals a fraction. Uh, the first thing is, really important you notice that this is an equal to sign, not a multiply, not a divide, but an equal to. So if these two fractions are equal, um, the basic approach we're going to take in this lesson is we're going to find the lowest common denominator for all the fractions. So uh, one of the denominators has a factor of a 5, this one right here, and the other has a factor of a p minus 2. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both of the fractions by that lowest common denominator. So what that's going to look like is We'll multiply this one by 5 times p minus 2, and multiply this one by 5 times p minus 2. A lot of parentheses here. Uh, what that does is that this denominator cancels with the p minus 2, and we're left with 5 times p. And then this denominator on the right, 5, divides with this 5, and we're left with 2 times p minus 2. Uh, now, you may have recognized a question like this, uh, kind of a shortcut we could do on this one. We could have just done 5 times p equals 2 times p minus 2 and gotten the same answer. Uh, but then we'll just solve from there. 5p equals 2p minus 4. Subtract 2p from both sides and you get uh, negative 4. p equals negative 4 thirds. Uh, and that is our solution. Uh, on the next question, on the right here, we can multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator. And there's only one denominator, so the lowest common denominator is a. So multiply both sides by a. And what that does is the a in the denominator divides out with that a. And then on the left side of the equation we get a squared plus a equals 6. Uh, since we have a squared term and an a to the first we should uh, collect all the numbers, all the variables on the same side so that the equation equals 0. Subtract 6 equals 0 and then we can try to factor and I think it's factorable. Factors of 6, so 1 and 6, 2 and 3, that'll get to a a 1 when you add or subtract them would be these two. So we have an a and a 2, an a and a 3. Uh, the 3 needs to be bigger than the 2, so we get a positive 1. So we get a equals 2 and a equals negative 3. And those would be our answers. So to summarize what I just showed you, we're going to multiply each term by the lowest common denominator to eliminate the fractions. Solve for x. Uh, but we do have to be careful about extraneous solutions. Uh, how do you check for extraneous solutions? When you plug in your answer to the original, is there division by 0? Now let's look at number 3. We'd like to multiply by the lowest common denominator. So uh, 24 is a 6 times 4. Um, so we need a 4 in each one. This one's going to need a 4. So lowest common denominator, we need a 4. Uh, we need a 6. This one has a 6. This one's going to need a 6. And this one's going to need a 6. So multiply by 6. Uh, and then this one has an x minus 2. The other two fractions don't have any x minus 2, so x minus 2. So it looks like the least common multiple, also known as the lowest common denominator, is 24 times x minus 2. So uh, multiplying, we're going to multiply this one by 24x minus 2. We're going to multiply this one by 24 times x minus 2. And we're going to multiply this one by 24 times x minus 2. 
and let's see what we get. Um, when we multiply the first fraction on the left, the 24 divides out with this 24, and we're left with 5 times x minus 2. Uh, next, the middle fraction, the x minus 2 divides with this x minus 2, so we're left with 24 times 3, so plus 3 times 24. Uh, and then lastly, the 4 divides with this 24, leaving 6 left over. 24 divided by 4 is 6. So we have 6x minus 2. 6 times x minus 2. Uh, and then we solve. So we would have 5x minus 10 plus uh, 72, I think equals 6x minus 12. Adding like terms, we get 5x plus 62 equals 6x minus 12. We'll bring the 5x to the right, so that would give us an x, and then add 12 to both sides, and we get a whopping 74. Uh, is 74 extraneous? Well, when I plug 74 in to my denominators, I really only have one that I have to check right here. 74 minus 2 is not 0. So 74 is a good answer. Uh, if you don't believe that it's the correct answer, you can plug it in. So you get uh, 5 over 24 plus 3 over 74 minus 2. Does that equal 1 fourth? Uh, and then I use my calculator and it does check. So we get an answer of x equals 74. How about you pause this video and see if you can do number 4 on your own. Alright, this is where we'll pick it up. Our lowest common denominator was a t. We only have one denominator here. So we're going to multiply both sides by t. And when we did that, uh, it distributes to each term. Multiply every term by t. So we get this uh, quadratic. Let me put it in the correct order. t squared minus 8t plus 12 equals 0. I believe that's factorable. Factors of 12, that would get me to negative 8. Uh, we could have uh, 2 times 6, that would get me to an 8. So we have t and a 2, t and a 6, and they both need to be negative since they multiply to positive 12 and add to negative 8. So we get two answers, we get t equals 2, and we get t equals 6. Uh, are either of these extraneous? Well, let's go back to the original. When we plug in 2 here, that's not division by 0. When we plug in 6 here, that's not division by 0 either. So it looks like both of these answers are valid uh, solutions to this equation. On to number 5. Uh, see if you can identify what is the lowest common denominator. What are we going to multiply each side by at number 5? Pause this video. I hope you said x times x minus 1. x minus 1 is its own factor, and x is its own factor. So you need an x, you need an x minus 1. So we're going to multiply both sides by x times x minus 1. x times x minus 1. Uh, be really careful that you multiply the left side, or sorry, the right side. Sometimes students will only multiply one side. Um, so what we get when we um, distribute this quantity, the x minus 1 will divide with this x minus 1. So the first term is just x times x, which is x squared. And then the next term, the x divides out with this x. So then we just have a 2 times a x minus 1 plus 2 times x minus 1 equals 1 times x is x and then times x minus 1. Uh, and then we can use the distributive property. There we go. 
we can uh, subtract x squared from both sides. That's nice. Uh, add x to both sides, maybe. Do that. So that would get us to 3x minus 2 equals 0. So x would equal add 2 and then divide by 3. Uh, is this extraneous? Well, when I plug in 2 thirds here, that is a defined answer. That's not 0. When we plug in 2 thirds here, that would be a negative 1 third. That's not 0 either. So this answer is a perfectly good answer. On to number 6. On number 6, I'd like to see if you're able to factor the denominator in the first fraction and identify the lowest common denominator. Uh, after you do that, see if you can multiply through and get the first step after multiplying all the fractions. So pause this video and see if you can do those steps. So after factoring, n squared minus 9 is a difference of two squares, so you should get n minus 3, n plus 3. And the lowest common denominator is that n plus 3, n minus 3. So uh, we're going to multiply each of these by that lowest common denominator. If you need to write it out to help yourself not miss a term, you can write it like that. We're going to multiply this one by that same n plus 3 and minus 3, and then multiply this last fraction by n plus 3 and minus 3. Okay, so let's see what divides out. Um, with this fraction on the left, the n plus 3 divides with this n plus 3, and the n minus 3 divides with the n minus 3. Lo and behold, how nice is that? We get a 4n squared. Um, the next one, this n plus 3 divides with this n plus 3, so we're left with minus 2 times the n minus 3 that we were left with right here. And then equals... <coughs> The n minus 3 divides with this n minus 3, so we're left with equals 3 times n plus 3. That's a lot of good work to that point. I'm very proud of you to make it to that point. After that, it's a process of adding like terms, negative 2n squared plus 6n equals 3n plus 9. 4n um, squared minus 2n squared is 2n squared plus uh, subtract 3n from both sides. So that's a plus 3n minus 9 from both sides and we get uh, 0. Um, let's see if this is factorable. There's not too many factors to try. So we know it's a 2n times an n. And uh, we'll try a 3 times 3 for 9. We'll make this one a negative, and this one's a positive. And that looks like it's the correct factorization. So solving from there, we get n equals 3 over 2, and n equals negative 3. Maybe I'll uh, write that up here so you can see, the, uh -oh, see that a little better n equals 3 over 2, and n equals negative 3. So again, let's see if either of these are extraneous. really love that eraser option. It's so nice. Um, so when we plug in 3 over 2 into any of these n's right here, right here, right here, uh, 3 over 2 is fine. It doesn't uh, give division by 0. However, when we plug in a negative 3 right here, or right here, we would have division by 0. If you plug a negative 3 and you get 0 there, you get 0 there, and that would be undefined division by 0. So negative 3 is no good. We call that an extraneous solution. Uh, it's not that we did work wrong. It's that when we actually plug it in, it doesn't actually give a true statement. It gives an undefined mathematical statement. So there's only one answer, n equals 3 over 2. Let's check out the next question, number 7. Number 7 is a perfect try this problem. 
Um, so how about see if you can solve all the way, solve for W, figure out what the answers are. I will project the answer uh, immediately when you uh, replay this video. Uh, and if you get it correct, then you can give yourself a try this smiley face. Congratulations. So let's see if you can get it right. Pause this video. So we had a lowest common denominator of w minus 1. We multiply every fraction, every term, this one, this one, and this one by w minus 1. Uh, we get two possible solutions, uh, but I hope you threw out this as extraneous. When you plug 1 into w minus 1, you get no solution. So this is an extraneous solution. It gives division by 0, which is a no-no. So our only solution is w equals 3. Well done. I hope you uh, helped your neighbor or you received help from your neighbor. And I uh, hope that you're understanding this concept. We have one more in this section, solving rational uh, equations. And then we'll go on to rational inequalities. All right, number eight. The l Oh, we got a little factoring to do. So let's rewrite this as p squared minus p plus 1 over p plus 1 equals, I'm going to leave myself a little space right there. Uh, factoring that denominator, we get p plus 1, p minus 1, difference of two squares. And the uh, numerator doesn't factor very nicely. Uh, and then plus p. Okay, so the lowest common denominator we would have is p plus 1 and a p minus 1. So we're going to multiply each of these by p minus 1, p plus 1. And then this one would be p plus 1, p minus 1. Oh, 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 there we go. And then this one is p plus 1, p minus 1. Okay, so let's see what divides out. Um, the fraction on the left, the p plus 1 divides with this p plus 1. So we're left with p plus 1. Oops. We're left with p minus 1 times p squared minus p plus 1 equals um, this middle fraction. Um, both of them divide out, which is very, very nice. So that leaves us just with p squared minus 7. Uh, and then the last one didn't have a fraction, so we multiply it all together. Uh, now this part here was p squared minus 1, so how about we multiply p times that? So that would be plus p cubed minus p. Okay. Um, <clears throat> need to do a little distributing. Distribute this p to each term. Distribute this negative 1 to each term. So we have uh, p cubed minus p squared plus p. And then the next round I'll do in green just to keep them separate. Negative 1 times p squared is negative p squared plus p minus 1 equals. Um, it doesn't look like we have any like terms here, but um, okay, I'll just rewrite them then. Okay, there we go. Uh, now let's see, what can we get rid of, or what can we combine? I guess we'll combine, we have a p cubed, we have a minus 2p squared, we have a plus 2p, and a minus 1 equals uh, all of this stuff, again. That would have been nice if I had ordered them by exponent. Um, both sides have a p cubed, p cubed, and let's move everything to the left. So subtract p squared, that's negative 3p squared. Uh, add p to both sides, plus 3p, and add 7 to both sides, plus 6 equals 0. 
Uh, notice each coefficient is divisible by 3, so let's divide everything by negative 3. So that would be a p squared minus a p minus 2 equals 0 divided by negative 3 is 0. Uh, and then this looks like it's factorable, so we come this way and we get a p minus 2 times a p plus 1 equals 0. So uh, our two possible answers, p equals 2 and p equals negative 1, uh, are either of them extraneous. So when I plug 2 into here and here at the top, uh, that's fine, so 2 works. When I plug in negative 1, however, when I plug in negative 1 right here, that would be undefined. So negative 1 is an extraneous solution. So we just get one answer, p equals 2. So uh, that's about half of the lesson, solving rational equations. We're going to use these same steps on the next part, solving rational inequalities. So let's look. So we have directions here. Uh, number one, we'll state the excluded values. Excluded values would be like when the denominator equals zero. So you'll notice here, if x is two, so we'll do excluded, uh, when x equals two, that's a problem. You get an undefined answer. We're going to use that a little later. Uh, step two, solve the related equation. So ignore the fact that it's an inequality for now. Uh, and then graph the solution, include the steps from number one, your excluded values, and, and include the answer you got from number two to figure out uh, your final solution. Um, so let's check this out. Our lowest common denominator, we're going to multiply every fraction by, uh, is a 3 times a 4 times an x minus 2. Uh, see if you can multiply each fraction by the lowest common denominator. Pause this video and see if you could do that first step. It looks like the first equation we would have is 4 times x times x minus 2. Um, the next fraction would be uh, minus 3 times 4 times 1 is 12. And then we're treating it like it equals. I'm going to circle that. We're acting like it's a equals for now. And then we multiply that last fraction by the LCD, which that would give us 3 times x minus 2. Uh, simplifying a little bit, we get 4x squared minus 8x minus 12 equals 3x minus 6. Uh, moving the 3x over, we get 4x squared. Let's see, subtract, so minus 11x, and then add 6, e uh, minus 6 equals 0. And let's see if this is factorable. A uh, quick way to tell, we'll multiply 4 times negative 6, and we'll multiply or bring down the 11. Are there factors of negative 24 that add to 11? Ah, I realized my right side was incorrect. So we have 3 times x minus 2. That's what I had before, but I forgot to multiply by x plus 1. Um, so that would give us 3 times uh, x squared minus x minus 2, which is 3x squared minus 3x minus 6. And all this comes down. Uh, let's see, subtract 3x squared. Well, let's move everything to the left. I'll use a different color here. So that would be an x squared. Uh, add 3x is a minus 5x. And then add 6 is a negative 6 equals 0. Um, that's factorable, x minus 6, x plus 1 equals 0. So we get an answer of 6 and we get an answer of negative 1. I hope your writing is smaller than mine because I surely ran out of space. So we get a 6, a negative 1, so let's remember all those values. 6, a negative 1, and a 2, the excluded value 2. So negative 1, 2, 6, negative 1, 2, 6, remember that.
Ah, uh, much more space now. So we had an excluded value of 2, and we had a, a x equals 6 and an x equals negative 1. So to solve this inequality, you put your numbers on a number line in order, so negative 1, 2, and 6. And as the directions on number 3 said above, you have to uh, pick numbers and test regions to see what regions are true, what regions are false. Uh, we've done this in the past with different topics. So uh, what I mean by testing a region, we're going to pick a number here, like negative 2, and we're going to plug that in to this equation and see if it's true or false. So we'd have uh, negative 2 over 3 minus 1 over negative 2 minus 2. Is that less than negative 2 plus 1 over 4? Um, so let's see, this is negative 2 over 3 plus a quarter. Is that less than negative a quarter? So a question mark. Uh, if it's true, then we'll shade where that region is. If it's false, then we won't shade where that region is. And yes, I believe that's true. That's about negative 0 0.4. Is that less than negative 0 0.25? Um, that is true. So we're going to shade on this side of the number line. That's part of our solution set. Any numbers less than negative 1 will make a true statement. Let's check another point in here. So we'll try 0. Plugging in 0, we get 0 over 3 minus 1 over 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Is that less than 1 fourth? Um, so this would be 0, so that would be a positive a half. Is that less than a quarter? Uh, that is false, so we will not shade. So we're not shading in that region. Uh, let's try another point in this region. How about we try 3? Plugging in 3, we get 3 over 3 minus 1 over 3 minus 2. Is that less than 3 plus 1 is 4 over 4? So this would be a 1 minus 1. Is that less than 1? Uh, that is true. 0 is less than 1. That is true. So we will shade in this region. So anything, any number you could have chosen in there would work. And then this last region, we'll try a 7. So that would be 7 over 3 minus 1 over 7 minus 2 is 5. And then is that less than a 7 plus 1 over 4? So 7 thirds minus a fifth, is that less than eight fourths is seven thirds minus a fifth less than two uh, I don't think it is I'm gonna use my calculator to double check that would be 2.1 is 2.1 less than two that is false so we're not shading in that region so our answer after all this uh, checking and things our answer would be uh, negative infinity all the way to negative 1. Those are with uh, parentheses. And then from 2 to 6. Uh, you could leave your answer just as a uh, graph. Like, whoops. Uh, just as a graph. I think this was a 6. So you can leave your answer like that. All right, how about you try number 10, uh, pause this video and see if you can figure out what the excluded values are and what the solution is and then graph the solution set. Make sure you get a LCD of 9x. We get a very pretty answer, x equals 15. We have one excluded value the excluded value is when the denominators give 0, when the fractions would be undefined. So the one excluded value is 0. That's important because when you graph it on your number line, you'll have a 0 
and a 15. Uh, and then we go about the process of plugging some numbers in. So we'll start, we'll try a negative 1, we'll try a 1, and we'll try a 16. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to practice plugging numbers in, see if you could plug numbers in and get uh, true or false statements. And if you would use negative 1, 1, and 16, so we're on the same page, that would be terrific. So pause this video and see if you can do that. All right, so the first region, I got a negative number less than 5 ninths. That's true. So we would shade on this side of the line. Uh, this middle part between 0 and 15, I got is 7 and 4 thirds less than 5 ninths. That is false, so I'm not going to shade in the middle there. And then the last one, I had to use a little calculator action, help myself out there. 0.52 is less than 0.55, that's true. So we're going to shade on this side of the line. Uh, be careful though, way back at the beginning, we do have a less than or equal to. So our answer can equal 15. So I do want to shade in that point. I don't want to shade in this extraneous or excluded value. Uh, I would never do that. Never want to do that. So uh, you could write your answer as negative infinity to 0, both with parentheses, uh, or bracket 15 to positive infinity. All right, I will let you attempt number 11. Go ahead and see if you can uh, do that whole process. Pause this video while you try that. All right, we'll pick it up here. The lowest common denominator is 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 1. We multiplied every fraction by that, I hope correctly. And then I started to simplify a little bit. Thought I'd stop there. Uh, okay, so we have a 2x squared plus 4. These subtract each other. And then we have a minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 6. Uh, let's take everything to the right side of the equation, subtract 2x squared from both sides, you get an x squared plus 3x, no like term, minus 4, you get a 10, and we subtracted everything from the left, so it's a 0, so we get 0 equals x plus 5 times x minus 2. So uh, two possible answers, x is negative 5, x is 2. Uh, along with the excluded values, we're going to have two excluded values. Excluded values. We have x equaling negative 2 and x equaling 1. So we have lots of regions to check on this one. Uh, we have four numbers that we're going to need to try out. So we have a see if I can remember these. We have a negative 2, a 1, a 2, and a negative 5. Uh, okay, so let me get rid of this screen and we will try to check those. So our number line we would have is like this. We put the negative 5 down and the negative 2, the 1, and the 2. Okay, so we have five regions to check. We'll put a negative 6 in, we'll try a negative 3, we'll try 0, that's always nice to use. Ooh, I need a fraction, 1.5, and we'll do a 3. Let's see what we get. Oh boy, we have a lot to check. So on the uh, for negative 6, I got a true statement. So we're going to shade on that side. Uh, for this one, this is a false statement. So I'm not going to shade here. Uh, for 0, that's a true statement. So I'm going to shade in between those two. 
Uh, and then it looks like I'm going to shade on this side as well. So that is solving rational inequalities. A lot of plugging numbers in. Feel free to use your calculator. That definitely helps. Uh, and then we have two additional word problems, which I will put on a different video. Thank you for watching, and have fun. Be patient. Have for persistence as you're solving these rational equations.